To be this good takes ages. The problem is, Sega were this good 25 years ago. Isn't it time to get better? Yes, it's that time again, another compilation of games released 25 years ago. This kind of thing should make me happy, shouldn't it? It should make me moist with excitement, but we've seen it time and time again. Maybe this time things are different, maybe this is the compilation to end all compilations. Ugh. It's the Mega Drive again. You know, I'd really like to see a Sega Saturn or a Sega Dreamcast compilation for a change. Maybe even a compilation dedicated to the Master System. That would be amazing. But I know that the Mega Drive, or Genesis if you prefer, was their most popular console and it's a cash cow. But I think it's time for a slightly newer compilation. People are thirsty for it. Still, that intro animation I've seen flying about looks all kinds of awesome. So let's approach this from a fresh sheet of paper. The game is developed by D3T, a work for hire development group who have helped with a number of well known titles, but with few games completely attributed to them. Although they have listed the Classics Collection as Sega, Mega, and Genesis Drive Classics. What the hell is that? Ah, well, this isn't going as smoothly as I'd hoped. I've recorded this intro several times, and after several cold boots, it still stutters, putting the rest of the intro out of sync. Maybe this is the fault of my Xbox One S. Maybe I need one of those powerful fangled X editions to run it competently. Or maybe it's just a glitch in this release that will be fixed for the public release on the 29th of May 2018. Not long to go, lads. Anyway, let's get to the gaming. Immediately, we're thrust into a kid's bedroom, which isn't a great place to get thrust into. But the idea is clearly to bring back those nostalgic memories of youth. Those of you sharp of wit may also receive some memories starting from about 2010 when a series of Mega Drive Classic volumes were launched for Windows. They're currently available through Steam using the same interface as this console release. Well, near enough. And that's because they're pretty much the same thing, albeit ported across with the odd tweak. The room is a little different and we've got some improvements, such as emulation options, but also it's not quite up to the PC in terms of graphics or attention to detail. I mean, check out the flickering room from the TV on the PC version. I really quite like that. A more pleasing tweak is the price. Whereas through Steam, each game you wanted was essentially DLC, this new outing comes with 50 games on the slate. Is it 50? Yeah, I think it's 50. Oh, no, it's over 50. Something over 50. Although on the downside, not all the games available through the PC edition are here. Whether they'll be released later as their own DLC, or maybe it's a licensing thing, I couldn't tell you. Although, given Sega have to pay royalties for part of the Sonic soundtrack, you'd assume they simply don't want to fork out for Sonic 3. But regardless, it's still one of the titles you can get through Steam. You can also install mods through the PC version, which is pretty darn awesome. Anyway, let's have a look around. There's some detail to this environment. We've got a Super Soaker clone under the desk there, a couple of posters. It would be nice to be able to customise this room. Maybe put up some, I don't know, Spice Girls posters? Yes, or even be able to swing that golden axe around and wreck up the place. But unfortunately, you cannot. One nice feature is how the time of day also syncs with your own, so you can play in the middle of the day or at midnight. You can also set this time manually, perhaps allowing you to recreate that early hour just before school when you could get half an hour of gaming in before grabbing some ready brek and speeding out of the house to catch the register, or not. Also, before we do anything else, I need to get rid of these floating labels, they just look crap. Okay, next to the TV, we have a phone lying on the floor. This is our gateway to online multiplayer. 
You can simply turn multiplayer on, and then when someone else is online, you can challenge them to a match. When this happens, the challenger takes control of proceedings, and the opponent simply acts like they're holding the second control pad in a local match. It's a nice setup which works well, but there aren't many people around to challenge in this pre-launch time, so let's move on. Over here are your achievements and leaderboards. Some of these I've already earned, such as this one. What are the buttons? The amount of times I've played the game and used the special weapon first is ridiculous. The leaderboards are currently filled with people who have review copies of the game. Look, there's RGT85. It's also the only time I'm ever likely to appear on these boards, so I took the time out to enjoy it. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! Human Back over here, we've got audio settings, which opens up a screen where we need to press a again to actually get the audio settings before realizing there's nothing here worth adjusting anyway. Up on that shelf are the credits alongside a magic 8 ball. Maybe I could ask it whether to buy this game or not. And some refined literature. Y2K, the lie, the interweb. Invest now. Ah, some illuminating hindsight there. Cassettes, a dying medium, you take that back. Down here, we can change our controls and the emulator settings. We've got quite a lot of options, but we'll get to those in a bit. Okay, to the games. Here's the entire collection. It's not bad, but like I say, there are key omissions. Likewise, there's also a fair amount of crap games. Any which you don't consider crap can be placed in a favourite section at the top left of the shelving. The rest you can leave to rot, or maybe fire up to remind yourselves of the worst of Sega's 16-bit era. Whilst we're in the rack, we can look at individual leaderboards and achievements, whilst also being able to choose the region on certain titles. It's a nice feature. It means we can turn Streets of Rage into the Japanese bare knuckle on a whim. Right, I'm going to dig into the Golden Axe series and explore some more of these emulation modes as I go. We've got a lovely insert animation to kick things off. Although the cartridge label isn't authentic, it would be nice to have the correct labels, especially for each region. In fact, it would be nice to see the box art as well, rather than this locked side-on view. But anyway, by default we're launched into a full-screen environment. I'm using the Mega Drive tessellated square design borders here, although if you're not a fan there are a few options to choose from, but in all honesty, I prefer the view from in front of the TV, and not just because it feels more 90s, the graphics actually look better in this view. Here's Golden Axe 2, very similar to the first outing, but with some notable improvements such as how you dispense magic. Now here I'm playing with the standard pixel perfect graphics, but some of those other modes are actually quite nice. Bilinear just blurs pixels together, and as you'd imagine it just makes everything a bit fuzzy. EPX algorithmically quadruples the pixel count, creating an image probably more suitable for today's huge screens. HQ4X is similar, but also anti-aliases the output, creating smooth diagonals. XBR is like HQ4X, but works better for complex patterns, and actually looks really quite nice, especially if you turn the scan lines on. Now this feels more like the CRT experience I remember, and that's because everything looked smoother on a smaller CRT screen. So although turning filters off is true to the original game and coding, it's not how we would have really experienced it on a 14-inch CRT. Anyway, let's go back to pixels. We can also change the TV projection as well. This is how curved the screen appears, again helping recreate that CRT experience. But this doesn't really work in full screen mode, nor do scan lines. In fact, it won't display scan lines full screen, even if it's turned on. But at least you can still use drastically unmatched border designs. Yeah, funky! 
perhaps wood grain is more appropriate here. What other options do we have? Ah yes, mirror mode, where the entire game is flipped horizontally. Thankfully the controls are also flipped, so it's still playable. Now this is an interesting feature, it's actually quite refreshing to play games in reverse, it feels like a new experience, although with some games the experience is pretty much identical. Another interesting option is to disable the sprite limit. I think the idea here is to eliminate the sprite flickering associated with having more than 20 sprites on a given line. In fact we can see this in operation. Sonic the Hedgehog proactively uses this limit to hide part of Sonic's body on the title screen. If you remove it, bingo, you can now see his belly bulging over the title screen, along with a disturbingly pumped arm. Jesus Christ, Sonic. Talking of which, let's move on to Sonic. Now the level select cheat can be made to work here, but getting it right is a bit more finicky. Whereas the Mega Drive is pretty forgiving when you hit A and start together, here you need to hit A just before start, or X in the case of my controller layout, otherwise you'll get thrown straight into Green Hill Zone. If you get it right and you'll find yourself in Starlight Zone, because that's where everyone goes simply to enjoy the soothing music. Which brings me on to sounds. Now there are recognisable differences with the emulated sound here. Take the spinning goalpost sound. You see, here's what it should sound like. Now it's hardly going to ruin your week, but it's a reminder that this is emulation and there will always be differences. What might ruin your day more is the noticeable slowdown and stuttering as you play. It's not prevalent, but it does happen, and it's enough to irritate you mid-flow. Come on guys, we're using hardware many, many times more powerful than the Mega Drive. At least use an emulator that doesn't get congested in its own code. But perhaps I'm nitpicking. Once again, I'm taking a fun collection of games and squeezing that enjoyment right out of them. But then there aren't that many games which I really enjoy here. I mean, there are enough for me to be content with, possibly even enough to pay the £25 asking price. After all, you're getting 50 games for the price of one. But I'm yearning for more. I want to see a Mega CD attachment under that Mega Drive. I want to be able to play Sonic CD, Lethal Enforcers, Night Trap. I don't want to be shacked up with Virtua Fighter 2, Alex Kid, and Galaxy Force. I've lived with them for long enough. But let's end on some good points. With the XBR smoothing mode on and scan lines, games like Beyond Oasis look absolutely incredible. Look, it's like experiencing the graphics of Aladdin all over again, when it felt like a playable cartoon in your living room. You can rewind and fast forward action using the controller triggers, although you can't rewind and then fast forward to where you were again. Once you rewind, all forward progress is lost, which is a bit strange, but you can play the game whilst holding fast forward, if standard speed is just too slow. Also, if you want to know what a ZX Spectrum game sounds like, then all you need to do is rewind Sonic. It's uncanny. You can of course save and reload games with several save slots for each title. You can even do a fast save and load using the right analog stick, which is a nice touch. You can have a matching border for Sonic the Hedgehog, although it would have been nice to have appropriate borders automatically switch in. You can stare at the TV screen static for hours, contemplating life, seeing things in the chaotic cosmic background radiation. Maybe the hand of God. The face of Sauron. Then after that you can play some more Mega Drive.
It is what it is. It's a collection of good and bad playable 16-bit games. If you go into it looking for enjoyment, you'll get enjoyment. If you go into it like a nitpicking bastard, just like myself, you'll walk away sour and with a taste of disdain in your mouth. But let's wrench ourselves away from that state of discontent, because the choice is ultimately yours. No matter how much grief I bestow upon compilations like this, this isn't a terrible one by any stretch of the imagination, and I had a pleasing amount of fun reliving these old titles in the comfort of my lounge, because that's the beauty of having it on a console, although it's probably still just as much fun on Steam. Anyway, there's a lot of fun games here, there's many options to play with, multiplayer I reckon can be an absolute blast. If you're a masochist, you can even play the crap games. What the hell? Anyway. That's the end of my review, I hope you enjoyed it. There's some more videos you can click here, there's places you can go, you can go to some other YouTube channels if you want, why not? There's some great ones out there. Anyway, thanks again for watching and have a great evening.